Hey everyone, welcome back to the Commitment to Growth podcast. This is your host, Mariana speaking, and thank you for choosing the Commitment to Growth podcast as your dose of self-improvement today. Welcome, welcome. If you're new here, welcome. (laughs) And if you're not new, welcome back. It is so lovely to be here with all of you today for another wonderful episode on personal growth, self-discovery, self-improvement, all of that juicy good stuff that we like to talk about here. I am feeling so refreshed, y'all. Let me tell you, I got back from a week-long vacation to Puerto Vallarta, which is a beautiful, beautiful beach town in my home country of Mexico. I took three of my closest friends down there and we spent our reading week that we were given at school just chilling by the beach. I learned to surf. Let me tell you, I think I found a new love of my life and just had the best time connecting with three of my closest friends and having awesome conversation and just really getting back in touch with my culture and enjoying the sun, get a nice tan. That's never a bad thing. So I'm feeling wonderful and actually properly rested. I put aside all schoolwork, put aside all extracurricular work, extracurricular activities and unplugged. I had very little Wi-Fi while I was down there. The only time I really pulled out my phone was to take pictures. And that was so eye-opening for so many reasons, which I won't get all into today because this episode is a little bit different uh, of a topic than what all of that encompasses. But I think I came back and as cheesy as this may sound, I feel like a different person. And I don't know if it's the the complete rest and the complete surrender to the rest, which I feel like seldom happens and I seldom experience, but it was a realization of the effort that it really takes to slow down and the intentionality that I think that we as a generation are grappling with when it comes to slowing down. I There were so many moments where I was sitting by the water. We sat, we stayed in this beautiful 13th a floor apartment that op- over- overlooked the open ocean and I was in so much awe and yet I still found myself having this little urge to like go get my phone or find something to work on on my computer and the effort that had to go into just being present at times was so real and so eye-opening um, about the things that we perceive as important when in reality are so not in comparison to the presence that we are here to experience in moments like when you're looking out at the open ocean at a sunset when you're looking to somebody's eyes like it was so eye-opening and I think I've come back from that holiday with a huge huge drive to be more intentional in slowing down and in how I spend that time that is more quiet that is less Um, filled with distractions. So I encourage you to start developing a practice for yourself daily where you take at least a minute to five, 10 minutes of your day to unplug completely and just sit in your thoughts, sit in your breath work, sit in your own presence and really indulge in what that is and see what comes up for you. Because I don't know that we realize often enough how much we're running to work, to answer a phone call, a text, an email, check our notifications on Instagram, and how much that is preventing us from seeing the things in that are around us that are really, really worth living. So something for you to think about today. Um, And I definitely want to record more episodes on that topic in the future. But today I am actually sitting down for you for a very spontaneous conversation. Um, As I am recording this, I got a notification from my school about an hour ago that uh, it won't be opening till later today. It's like 9 a.m. and I have till uh, like 12.30 to leave for class because we got snowed here in Victoria and uh, we're kind of wimpy when it comes to snow over on this side of the West Coast. We're not really used to it and we're not really prepared for when it hits hard. So I'm having a cozy little snowed in morning and I figured what the heck I was feeling inspired so we're gonna we're gonna chat today for a bit of a raw and unfiltered uh, unrehearsed conversation on something that I've been talking to a lot of friends about recently Uh, so I've mentioned this on here in the last couple months but I am graduating from university in 
about six weeks from today, which is insane to me and it makes me want to cry almost just saying it out loud. Um, but this particular conversation that I've been having with a lot of friends and classmates is surrounding, you know, this next chapter of our lives. For a lot of us, we don't have too much of a plan going forward or we have plans but we're taking a little a little bit of a break before heading into those plans or we have plans but they're not concrete so for me i you know after april when i graduate i have an indefinite amount of time of just work and God, a whole bunch of I don't know what else <laughs> until I managed to get into medical school. I'll be applying a second round this summer because I wasn't successful in my first round. Um, so I'll be working. I'm hoping to travel and everything. But it's the first period of my life where I will have completely unstructured time that isn't dedicated to a greater thing that is leading me onto something else. You know, like school is structured. I have class I have to fulfill because there's you know, either uh, upper year classes that need prerequisites or school is preparing me for the next thing. But, you know, in a in about six weeks, I will have finished this huge chapter and need to make meaning of it on my own time. And it's difficult because there's so many options ahead of me and so many things that I want to do. And it almost feels like not having this structured activity that you're attending makes your time filled with less purpose and I think that a lot of my friends are experiencing that where we all walked into university feeling like the second we left we were going to know what we were going to do and we were going to be enlightened with purpose and with a career path and just like having everything paved out for us in the future and I think about 90% of us are coming to realize that that is so so not the case and so many of us feel like we just got thrown into like open water and we don't know where to swim or how to swim after <laughs> April. And it's a really discouraging feeling because human beings, we are, we're purpose driven and we need a why behind the things we do. And we need a sense of purpose when doing the things we do to find fulfillment in those activities a lot of the time. And that's exactly why I wanted to record this episode because I've been thinking a lot about purpose and what I've learned about purpose and the kinds of conversations that I've been having in response to a lot of my friends who feel kind of the down of feeling like they're not going to have purpose after our career um, in university and feeling like this next chapter is really big and scary because it means that they have to find that overarching purpose when that is so, so not true. Um, purpose can be so ill-defined in for a lot of us and it can make kind of choosing a career path or just living life in general really discouraging. So aside from leaving university and feeling like you have no purpose, I wanted to make this conversation all about redefining what purpose is and can mean for us and how we can redefine purpose to make it way less daunting and to live a more fulfilling life that is more based on our day-to-day -day actions versus always, always working towards a five or 10 year plan that is fueled by one key idea of what we believe our purpose is. So this episode is for you. If you're also feeling in the limbo, like you're in open water, like you don't really know what you're doing next, like you feel really guilty that you don't have a dream or a vision that is, you know, maybe taking up your entire future, it's okay if that is not the case and it's okay if you don't know what you were put on this earth to do yet because that isn't really what we came here to do i believe i believe that our purpose is defined by the day-to-day -day things that we do and how we infuse our days with intention and how that desire for personal growth and self-inquiry drives our own evolution so we're gonna get into that in this episode but First, I would like to give an acknowledgement that I am recording this episode on the land of the Wasanich speaking peoples, particularly the Sartlip, Seau, Saikam, Malaha, and Pakwachin nations. And today, another kind of juicy item that I want to leave you with, a little uh, piece of reflection that I want to leave you with, is I want to encourage you to consider and really think about 
how your positionality as a settler has benefited you in ways that you may not have realized or in ways that are so subtle in your day-to-day life that are unbeknownst to you. So for example, recognizing that your ancestors, for many of us, uh, were not displaced from their homes, that many of us can go to hospitals and healthcare settings and trust those healthcare settings because there isn't a history of mistreatment of people like us in history. Things like that that we take so for granted that are so, so key in acknowledging our privilege and in acknowledging how we can fill those gaps for other people who are marginalized in our society is so huge and such an important part of developing community and developing unification between communities and building empathy between oppressed communities and non-oppressed communities. So want to leave you with that little tidbit of uh, information and pondering to do because I think it's super important. It's something that I've been thinking about a lot in my own life and how I'm taking that knowledge into what I'm going to do after university and the kinds of activities and uh, I guess greater purpose-filled endeavors that I want to do afterwards to keep educating myself and to keep educating others. So I'll leave you with that tidbit of information to think about today. And without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Alrighty, let's talk purpose and let's kind of dismantle some of the misconceptions that we are told about purpose that might be leading us astray or making us feel distraught about how we find our purpose and what it means to do so. So I think that what we're kind of taught through movies and books and the media is that our purpose is this big mission, this life mission that we are supposed to go and find out in the world. It's either something that we spend our life searching for or some huge catalytic event shows us what that purpose is. And don't get me wrong, for a lot of people, that is the truth. That is what happens for a lot of people who may not have found it otherwise. But I think that I would say that for the large majority of us, our purpose is actually right in front of us a lot of the time, but we don't pay attention because so many of the things that we do that are aligned with that purpose are so subtle to us in nature. So I think about purpose as something that we are actually responsible for building in ourselves and into our daily lives. I think of purpose as what intention are you taking into the day? How are you being present and intentional about the things that you do with yourself, with others, and in your passions on a given day and it is in paying attention to the things that we are naturally drawn to that we can start pulling apart the things that drive our soul and the things that we are naturally drawn towards that fulfill us. So for me, for example, I have always felt a really big inclination to bringing people together. And for me, that's because, you know, as immigrants and, you know, as immigrants that moved to Canada without any family to this day, my parents, my sister and I are the only people on either side of our family that are in Canada. And what that meant for my parents was building a family away from home and choosing family. And so growing up, our house was like the party house and my parents had dinners like almost every weekend with friends or we would go out with friends and I really watched my parents bring people together and introducing people from different friend groups and everything and how that act of just wanting to build connection and build family brought other people together and now I go back to Vancouver and there's just like this hub of people that surrounds my parents and my family and it's just the most wonderful thing feeling like we have a family away from home that we chose. So for me, 
I've always resonated with that because I value connection a lot and how I honor that value and that love for people and conversation and connection and vulnerability is by bringing people together. Like I tried to do on this recent trip to Mexico, like I try to do when I host gatherings and parties at my house here in my little university town. And I think that's one example of noticing how the things that fulfill our soul then drive our actions. Because the other thing too is that we can have multiple purposes. You know, I, once again, I feel like purpose is seemingly this like non-plural thing, the singular, call it a verb, call it an adverb. I don't know. I don't know what those like now and what the differences are, but um, we can have multiple purposes in our life. I think we can have multiple projects and goals that fuel us, but are nonetheless fueled by the little more specific things that light up our soul, whether it's connection, whether it is helping other people, whether it's um, finding love, helping other people find love, whatever that is to you and whatever it is that moves you to touch other people is where your purpose is. So I think one thing to keep in mind if you are kind of currently struggling with defining purpose or kind of waking up every day um, and feeling like you don't have motivation because you don't have something that you're working towards, start just setting a simple intention for yourself that is driving you towards becoming the version of yourself that you want to be. And it doesn't at all have to be associated with a particular career path. Like I'm not saying, you know, start waking up every day and watch videos on how to you know, make videos if you think you want to be a director or producer or something. No. What I'm saying is wake up and make the intention to perhaps drink a glass of water first thing in the morning or journal first thing in the morning or go for a walk first thing in the morning because you either want to be physically healthier because you want to have more mental clarity and you want to be with somebody with more mental clarity or you want to learn how to spend more time in your thoughts and being at peace with your own thoughts. Do you see how those are little things that are simply fueling you and the person that you want to be rather than always being driven by a greater vision or having to work towards something that is bigger than you in terms of a career or a goal? I think that is a great place to start if you are sitting in a limbo where You don't have a defined path because at the end of the day, not having a defined path is okay. And there's no timeline for you to have a defined path for yourself, but it gets overwhelming when we don't have a plan. And if you're like me, you're ambitious and have so many things that you want to do and so many things that you're inclined towards and then get overwhelmed at the thought of, oh my gosh, which one do I have to pick? If that is the case, your job is to start small and to start doing the inner work and the self-inquiry to see and come closer to the inclinations that drive you to doing certain things in a day. Pay attention to the hobbies that you're drawn towards. And if you don't have hobbies, if you don't feel like you have hobbies, what are the things that you kind of like the impulses that you're drawn towards when you are bored and count and picking up your phone does not count. Um, I think that's a great place to start. For me, I have found over the last year that a lot of my impulses when I'm quote unquote bored are towards journaling or towards recently playing piano and learning to sing. Don't ask how that second part is going, but <laughs> um, playing piano, doing art, sometimes writing poetry, And that for me has fueled the inquiry and the self-discovery process to ask myself, okay, why am I drawn to those things? Why do I like expressing myself on paper? Why does it feel good to, you know, put emotions into words and sentences and sentences that 
you just kind of go in this rhythm or rhyme, it is in those impulses and in those activities that for no apparent reason, perhaps, fuel you that hold the a lot of the keys to the things that fill your soul and that are leading you towards the purposes that are going to make up your life and your landscape. So I think a really big takeaway to keep in mind after that, and I think it's something that we shy away from a lot because we're told that our time needs to be filled with activity and hustle and bustle and movement for it to be purposeful, is just let yourself get bored more often. Let yourself sit in boredom more often and let yourself sit in the emotions that arise when you sit in boredom because it is in those quiet moments where you're not reaching for your phone and you allow yourself to just be that you give your heart the space to sing as cheesy as that might sound and for lack of a better way to put it it is in that intentional silence that your intuition and your soul will start telling you and giving you messages and giving you directions on where to draw your attention, where to start putting your intention for you to start being fueled with purpose and being fueled with ideas on how to start carving a path for yourself that feels purposeful and intentional and fun. I think that's a huge aspect of it as well is prioritizing fun above all because I think that it is in the moments where we are doing something completely in flow and where we are completely in awe and it brings out the natural fun in us, the natural inclination for fun that a lot of us hold inside and that our, our, you know, our, our inner child holds inside but we don't make enough time for often that we are able to see clearly the things that we enjoy and why. So to kind of recap all of that for a sec here, let yourself be bored in the moments where you are beginning to experience boredom or on the days where you don't have anything planned because it is in boredom that your soul's inclinations will start revealing themselves and prioritize fun when you are picking activities to do because it is in fun that you find flow and it is in flow that you find alignment with the things that light you up and give you purpose and fulfillment. I think another kind of key aspect of purpose that is often really daunting for a lot of us and I certainly struggle with this even to this day but struggled with this around my second year of university when I was really starting to question what I wanted to do with my career was realizing that for me to start developing my purpose and for me to understand why I'm inclined to certain things or to discover what my inclinations were, there is a certain degree of self-inquiry and self-discovery and inner work that has to take place for me and for all of us to peel back the layers to get to our core and the root of the things that we like doing and that we are naturally inclined towards. And I think that inner work for a lot of us is really scary. I've talked about this a lot on here, but with inner work comes facing a lot of our negative internal narratives and negative self-beliefs and fears and insecurities and all of that juicy stuff that I think a lot of us would rather tuck away a lot of the time. I I speak for myself when I say that. But with anything that fills our life with joy and like many things that we will begin pursuing that are bigger than us, there comes with a degree of hardship in that as well and in those journeys and I think that when it comes to purpose a lot of that is doing the inner work to come back to yourself and to unpeel the layers of conceptions that you've been told that 
about purpose, perhaps. Like that purpose is this overarching career goal that you should have for your life. It's this thing that you look for outside of yourself. It's about learning to peel back those layers to understand what is beneath all of the things that you've been told will make you happy to get to the root of what will actually make you happy and what will actually light up your soul, even if it seems like something totally out of reach and totally like inconceivable. Maybe your dream is to become a professional athlete. Maybe your dream is to start a business that nobody has ever done before because you have a crazy idea that nobody has ever tried before. And because it's never been done before, because you haven't started pursuing it or because you haven't reaped the the joy of that that vision, the fear of not fulfilling it may right now overpower the drive that you may actually have towards fulfilling that thing because you have a certain conception about what purpose is or what you should actually be doing with your time based on what everybody else is doing. But I think that a huge part of this journey is leaning into how you want to feel about life I spent a large chunk of 2022 reading a book called The Desire Map by Danielle Laporte, which if you've been here long enough, you've heard me talk about it. It is my holy grail, um, my just one of the most incredible books that I've ever read on goal setting and setting a vision for your life. And the foundation that Danielle talks about in this book for building a a roadmap and a you know a vision board for yourself and for your future plans is to fuel those visions with the feeling that you want to have in your day-to-day life rather than a number or a picture or a an end goal that you perceive will make you feel a certain way because when you start fueling your time and your visions with joy or closeness or intimacy or or I don't know fun like the emotions that you want to experience on a day-to-day basis and you make those the priority of your life and your visions the rest will unfold itself for you because failures and trials and tribulations that arise when you are striving towards your goals will feel more like a redirection and like a new opportunity for you to get closer to the feeling that you are aiming for rather than deteriorating the result that you have been achieving or aiming for to achieve. So if you are lost right now because you cannot come up with a specific vision of what you want your life to look like, start focusing on how you want your life to feel like and let that fuel your path towards the things that you want to do and the things that light you up because that is what will keep your life consistently filled with purpose because already in the pursuit of trying to feel a certain way, in the pursuit of trying to expand your consciousness, in the pursuit of trying to get closer to people in the pursuit of trying to be a more expansive person that is filled with abundance, that is already purposeful on its own time. And it's not because you may necessarily be striving towards a bigger vision or one specific goal, but because you have now found a reason to do the things that you want to do. You have found a reason to call up your friends on a Saturday night to come over for wine because you want connection. You have found a reason to try a journaling exercise with your partner because you want there to be more self-growth and personal motivation in your romantic relationship. You have found a reason to go for a run every morning because you want to perceive that you have less limitations that you have right now and feel like you are less limited and like you can move freely. Do you see how that is now a pillar for you to carry into the rest of your life and a pillar for you to discover yourself and your inclinations because now you are so focused on how you want to feel and you are prioritizing your joy and your own fulfillment and your own enjoyment from life that 
your feelings and how you prioritize how you want to feel about life will naturally lead you in the direction to the things that make you feel that way. Oh, I love that tangent. <laughs> Thank you for listening. That was that was an example of flow for me right there. That was so cool. But I hope that made sense. And I hope that that uh, pushed you in some way to reflect a little bit more on the conceptions that you might have about purpose right now that might be making the process towards discovering what those things are a little bit less daunting and a little bit less overwhelming because you did not come here to be just one thing and I want you to remember that above all else. You are a complex human being with emotions and aspirations that are going to change as you age and as you go throughout life and as you have different experiences and it is okay for you to not identify with one idea of yourself or one idea of what you should be because you life is just so much more than being one thing and it is about reaping the benefit of all the things that you are able to create for yourself and and all the things that you can experience when you choose to put yourself out there and when you choose to go and try them despite the possibility of failure or despite the possibility of re- realizing that they might not be in alignment with who you are or what you value or what you want out of life and that is a huge part of developing your purpose as well is recognizing that you are going to try so many avenues and you are going to try so many things and you're going to, have to put yourself out there so many times before you land in the place that feels like home to you and that feels like it's in alignment with your truest self and that is okay because every time that you land in a place that doesn't feel in alignment with who you are you are one step closer to the next to the next place that is going to feel closer to you so just keep that in mind once again you're not meant to be one thing and you're not meant to work towards a single thing for the rest of your life your job here on earth is to leave a a piece of yourself for future generations and to leave a legacy behind and it is okay if that legacy right now is showing up every single day despite uncertainty with the knowledge that you are capable and meant for more and you are striving towards learning what that is by choosing every single day to be better to be present, to be more loving, to be more kind, to be more respecting of yourself and of others, and that you are making the effort in trying new things, in talking to new people, and being conscious and present in your own silence to understand and to listen to what your soul is trying to tell you. Because I think that that on its own takes a lot of courage when you are trying to get past the narratives that have told you that certain things will make you happy and instead you are choosing to radically accept and own the pieces of you that are telling you no this is what actually lights you up and this is what will guarantee you fulfillment regardless of if they are what everybody else is doing or not so that is this week's episode on purpose for you i hope you enjoyed it i hope it is uh Hope you remember that you are so worthy of being here and you are so worthy of the joy that you are seeking, even if you don't have a plan for life right now because you came on this earth to experience joy, not to be a machine that is constantly trying to prove themselves by putting out work into into the, the void. So I love you all so much. Thank you so much for being here this week and I cannot wait to see you in the next episode. See you later. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. That was so, so wonderful to talk about. And I hope that it helps you moving forward on your own journey towards fusing your days with intention and purpose and motivation and inspiration that is all from within. So if you want to see more of uh, the Commitment to Growth podcast, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's at Commitment to Growth podcast. If you want to be a guest on the show or you have future uh, recommendations for uh, 
episode topics my apologies i blanked out there you can message me right on facebook and or instagram or you can email me it's commitment to growth pod at gmail.com don't forget to subscribe leave a rating on apple podcast spotify wherever you get your podcast because that helps push this out to more people and as a final note if you want to see other content other than uh, podcast goodies from me, you can check out the website. It's commitmenttogrowth.com. I post uh, some blog posts on there. I'm also on Medium. Just search Commitment to Growth on there and I write a lot about personal growth and self-discovery and they're short little reads so they're super fun if you're just sitting on the bus or having your coffee and you want something to, to kind of pick apart at. So that's it from me this week. I am so grateful for your presence here. I am so grateful for each and every single one of you that choose this platform every week to listen, learn, and grow with me. I totally stole it from Jay Shetty. My apologies, but I will see you in the next episode and I cannot wait to see you.